Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat. The sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us all rise and sing our processional hymn, the first hymn on the sheet, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Blessed Christmas to each one of you. 
we shall follow the order of worship that is found in the readings for Sunday worship year B book and we shall be following from page 15 onwards which is the second alternative reading though we will have the gospel reading from the first alternative but the rest of the readings will be from page 15 following and the Lord's Supper booklet we will be following from page 105 section 3 following Behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray the prayer of purity, section 4. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Isaiah announces the joyful news of the coming of Prince of Peace. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, selected verses. The people walked in darkness, 
have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of grieved darkness, on them has light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, thou hast increased its joy. They rejoice before thee as with joy at the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. The second reading has been taken from Responsible Psalm 86, verses 8 to 13. Your response, to us a child is born, a son is given. Among the gods, there is none like unto thee, O Lord, nor are there any deeds like thine. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship thee. O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. Your response to us, a child is born, a son is given. For thou art great and doest wondrous things, e thou alone art God. Teach me thy way, O Lord, that I may walk in thy truth. O oh, let my heart rejoice in reverence for thy name. Your response. To us a child is born, a son is given. I will thank thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and will praise thy name forevermore. For thy great is thy loving kindness towards me, and thou hast delivered me, my life, from the nethermost pit. Your response to us a child is born, a son is given. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 6. Jesus is God's perfect and final revelation to the world. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by his word of power. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has obtained is more excellent than theirs. For to what angel did God ever say, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me 
a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all, the, all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Our graduate name is number two from the sheets while shepherds watch their flocks by night. to the city of David, 
which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among humankind, with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. This is the Gospel of Christ.
very blessed Christmas to you all once again and it is indeed a joy to all of us to be able to worship in this manner after a very long time though we are still maintaining our uh, social distancing and things like that but nevertheless uh, we have not stopped to praise God and we really believe that all these things have been possible only by the grace of God and I think that all of you would agree with me that even during the pandemic, though each one of us, we feel sort of uh, left out and anxious about so many things, but each one of us has not stopped worshipping God. We praise God that even something that has never ever happened is that we have had our online worship services and that has kept all of us going. So we continue to thank God and praise God for everything. And yes, as uh, I was saying that things like social distancing or I would rather call it physical distancing, wearing of masks, sanitizing our hands, washing our clothes and taking a bath every time we go out and come in and so on and so forth has become uh, the new normal for us today and uh, it seems at times very weird uh, as we normally say. Uh, and at times we feel that uh, what has happened to us? Suddenly we feel like absolutely alienated, absolutely uh, something like being ostracized. Uh, we are also afraid to have people in our homes uh, and such things. And uh, also we feel that even our freedom of movement uh, has been restricted. And today even as we are gathered here with all, you know, following some of the protocols of the pandemic, uh, but we still are faced with this reality. And uh, none of us can deny that this is a reality which uh, each one of us has been experiencing for the last uh, nine months or so. A very strange thing, I think we all have realized by now, that it has been the work of a small and tiny little virus, microscopic virus, that has been so powerful, that has invaded us, that has invaded our lives, literally. And this is something, you know, we find so astonishing, something that we would never even have thought of. And though this pandemic has hit hard on many of us, or rather all of us, many people have lost lives, they have lost jobs, there have been all kinds of ups and downs. And through this time of calamity and crisis, you know, we have somehow accepted this as something very real, something that is undeniable, that we cannot sort of ignore. And even as these things are undeniable, as these things are so real, it's not a dream, definitely not. But we all acknowledge that this is something very, very real, which is a stark reality. And thus today, uh, the message that I have for you is the conventional way of making room, the unconventional way, sorry, the unconventional way of God to make room for the birth of the Savior. And in this unconventional way, we find that how the stark reality has not only hit us at this point of time, but there is another stark reality which we know but which we often fail to acknowledge, fail to realize, and that stark reality has affected us, impacted us, even after more than 2,000 years. And yes, friends, you have guessed rightly that this stark reality is the birth of the Savior, of God becoming human, becoming part of us, becoming something that we can identify with. This process of making room has not been easy uh, for God. 
And when I make such a statement, I think many of us will be wondering, why not? For God, everything is possible. Why was it difficult for God to make room for the birth of the Savior? And the answer is that God's mode of operation is not like the way you and I work or you and, you and I operate. It is entirely different. We have just read from the Old Testament that he is called the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, the Wonderful Counselor and so on. So if that is the attribute of God, how can we even say that it was a difficult task? And yes, friends, it was a difficult task because it was not easy for God to convince people, to convince situations to be able to accept the Savior. And when I say the word convince, I think that perhaps is not a very strong word because God does not convince the way you and I convince for our own selfish motives. But this was something for the good and the welfare of God. And a few things that uh, as I was uh, pondering on this uh, morning's message, certain thoughts which I'd like to share with you this morning that uh, God's way of doing, as I said earlier, has been very different. And the first thing, the first person that we find who was uh, favored by God was Mary, the mother of Jesus. Being born or being conceived by the Spirit of God. Then we come to another unconventional way of God, the way he made room for the Christ child. And that was the place of Jesus' birth. Again, a place that is absolutely unacceptable, absolutely appalling. Have we ever heard, I mean, I do not know, but even I think people on the streets, their children are not born in a stable. But who would have ever thought of giving birth to a child in a stable and laying the child in a manger? How incredible, how unconventional, how different. Why God? You are the author of this entire universe. You have the whole world in your hand. And why would you choose such a way? Imagine the stable, which is one of the most offensive places to be born, a human child to be born. And yes, friends, whether it was Mary in her teenage unmarried state, or Joseph, or whether it was this table, all of these things were a stark reality. Watched their flocks by night. Who would have heard a story like this? Where the shepherds would encounter the angels. The angels who came to announce the birth of the Messiah, the birth of the Savior, and all that followed. And I think we all like Luke chapter 2 verse 16 where the shepherds say that let us go and meet this child about whom the angel had spoken to us and they went out in haste. In fact in Luke's gospel the word haste, you know to go somewhere speedily comes quite often. Even Mary after having received this uh, information or when it was announced to her after the Annunciation, she went out with haste to her cousin sister Elizabeth. Haste, haste always gives us a sense of urgency, you know, when we are in a hurry because there is something important 
something urgent that needs to be done or needs to be told. And yes, this was how even the shepherds reacted. And of course, let us not forget the wise men whom we all love, the children love to be the wise men all the time in their uh, Christmas plays. The wise men, in their conventional way, they realize that a king has been born. To that, till that point of time, their calculation was absolutely perfect. And again, in their conventional way, they went rightfully to a palace, the palace of Herod. But to their utter dismay, there was no sign of any child in that royal palace. What has happened? What has gone wrong? Conventional ways all the time does not lead to what is correct. And that is exactly what happened to them. And later on, as we read in Matthew's Gospel, it says, that when they came out of the palace, they saw the star and they rejoiced exceedingly and they kept following the star. The star guided them. And where did the star guide them? Again, to that very unconventional place of the stable. And many times, uh, you know, think that you know the wise men just enter this table very happily. But have we ever questioned that why would any wise man or any other person, even if it was you or me, in our right mind, why would we even want to peep into a stable to see that you know a child is there or not? Who would do that? But again, we believe that everything was prompted by the Spirit of God. Everything was worked out the way God had designed. And we do not know for what reason. Nobody called them. Mary and Joseph were not out, outside the stable saying, come, come and meet our baby. No, they had no idea who was coming. But these wise men, they entered that place. And when they saw the child, you know, we don't have all the details, but we can also say that there was no confusion regarding the identity of the child. They could have said that, oh, perhaps, is this the right child? I mean, these are all some rustic people over here. But definitely, they did recognize, again, in that unconventional way, they recognized this was the child and once they recognized the word of the Lord says that they knelt down they bowed down they literally prostrated themselves can you imagine that scene in that simple stable in that kind of a place you know of course people do say that perhaps uh, Joseph and Mary were not in the stable by the time the wise men came wherever they were but it was not some royal place, but a place that was least expected. And the wise men prostrated themselves before a tiny child. What a scene. We sometimes, you know, become overwhelmed by certain scenes. You know, maybe you're watching a movie or you hear some famous quotes and, you know, we feel rising. But just imagine the scene that these wise men, they were prostrating themselves before the Christ child because they realized that this was the Messiah. And once again, God's unconventional ways. You know, the gifts they brought for the child. Have we ever heard anybody giving gifts? such kind of gifts to any child, giving gold, frankly, perhaps gold, yes, but 
what about frankincense and myrrh? Again, these unconventional gifts that were given to the little baby Jesus. Because when the wise men gave those gifts, it was not to a little baby, but they gave to the Messiah, to the Savior of the world, their Redeemer, the one who was going to be their ruler, their master, their Lord. And that was the acknowledgement. Even the tiny little baby commanded that kind of a dignity. And that was the power of the Christ child. Yes, friends, the stark reality of the birth of Christ brings us to the stark reality of the various unconventional things, not only that had happened during the birth of Christ, but which continues even now, even today. And even this Christmas, as we are celebrating Christmas, um, or even we are worshipping, it's not the absolutely usual way. There are a lot of unconventional things happening around us. Lots of things that we have not imagined, we have not even thought about. And those things are happening. And thus, what is the message for us this morning, on this Christmas Day, as we ponder on this unconventional way of God to make room for the birth of the Messiah? If God works in such ways, such unconventional ways, and let us be reminded again and again, and that's why I keep repeating, that all of these things, each one of those, was a stark reality. And everything that happens in your life and in my life is also a stark reality, absolutely undeniable. And if God works in this manner, is there room anywhere in our midst for this Messiah to come? What is our response? There are lots of common, insignificant, forgotten, lost things that you know we don't want to remember perhaps, or perhaps they come to us as memories, you know, flooding our minds. But whatever the situation may be, let us remember that through all of these things which we have tried to ignore or which we don't really care for and it is through those little things those unusual things that God speaks to us even today and before I close let me just say that as I said at the beginning that it was a small, tiny virus that has caused so much of calamity to all of us, the entire world. And so, friends, let us not ignore that tiny virus which has conquered the world. As it taught us, and I believe it is continuing to teach us of the most unconventional ways by which God speaks to us the stark reality of his coming into our lives. May the Spirit of the Lord continue to speak to us, continue to nudge us, continue to prick us as we ponder in our, whether we are busy, whether we are lazy, whether we are sleeping, whether we are anxious, whether we are fearful. But remember, the Lord continues to work in those unconventional ways. And even in these unconventional times, ways, there is one message for all of us, that yes, the Lord has come. Let us rejoice. Fear not, for 
I am with you. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Let us quiet our hearts as we ponder on these thoughts. And may we ask the Lord to continue to speak to us in our times of crisis, in our times of loneliness, in our weariness, in all our calamities, and even in those overwhelming moments when we have no clue as to how to go about. Gracious and merciful Lord, we have no words to express our gratitude for all that you have done and you are doing in our lives. And today, even as we ponder your coming, Lord, we pray that this ponderance be not just confined to the Christmas day alone, but let it be a daily contemplation, a daily pondering of our hearts by which we can always look up to you and we can rejoice at the fact that no matter what happens, but you are with us because you are in man. We praise you, merciful Lord, that you have become like one of us so that you can relate with us, you can identify with us, and by which each one of us can be drawn closer to you. We pray for all of those who have gathered here and all those who have not been able to come. We ask your blessings on each person, on each family, and we pray that your spirit will minister to all of us, to our needs, to all our thoughts and our plans. And now even as we prepare our hearts to receive the Holy Sacrament, we pray that you will come to us afresh, that you will be manifest even as we partake of your holy body and blood. And in, in and through this fellowship, may we continue to declare and pronounce your greatness, your might, and above all, your love for each one of us. Forgive us for all our shortcomings and for all our weaknesses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us turn for the intercession, the Lord's Supper booklet to page 110, page 110. In our intercession this Christmas morning, let us join our prayer for the whole human family, for the unceasing prayer of Christ the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for justice and peace in the whole world and for fullness of life for everyone. Lord, in your mercy, for all who live in this place, for the removal of all that divides us from each other, and for true harmony in our country. Lord, in your mercy, for all engaged in agriculture, industry, and commerce, for all workers skilled and unskilled, and for all those who defend our country. Lord, in your mercy. For teachers and students, scientists, artists, and writers, and for all who influence the minds and hearts of others. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are suffering, 
the poor and the hungry, the destitute and oppressed, the unemployed, the sick, especially, Lord, at this time of pandemic, we pray for those in our midst, those around us and those around the world, that, Lord, your holy hand of healing will reach out and touch. We pray for the sick and the dying and for all who help them. Lord, in your mercy, for all to whom authorities are entrusted in this and other countries, and especially for our president, the prime minister, the governor, and chief minister of the state, and for all those who have power over other people. Lord, in your mercy, for the unity of all Christian people, and for their witness and service in the world. Lord, in your mercy, for your whole church in our country, for its councils and leaders, especially for the moderator of the CNI, the moderator of the Church of South India, the Metropolitan of the Mahatma Church, for Bharatosh, our bishop, for James, our presbyter, and for all other ministers of your church, that they may be faithful in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, that with all your people who have faithfully served you in this life, we also may share in the eternal joy of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, together, hasten with Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant these petitions, which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us turn to the confession. Confession of Sin, page 114, section 17. <coughs> Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ said, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins and penitence and faith, firmly resolved by God's grace, to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Let us pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and we repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is lost and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us all rise for the sharing of peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us first in all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us all share the peace with one another. Our open tree hymn is number three, the first Noel.
Let us present these offerings and with them ourselves for the service of the Divine Majesty. All things come from you and of your own to be given. Almighty God, Creator of the world, we ask you to accept these offerings and gifts of bread and wine for the glory of your name and the good of your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Therefore, Heavenly Father, in remembrance of him, we set apart this bread and this cup. We celebrate and proclaim his perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into heaven. And we look for his coming.
Now with faith to receive this holy sacrament, let us give thanks to God. First prayer, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you ourselves to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work. 
Church notices. I greet each and every one of you in the precious name of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, and once again wishing each one a very blessed Christmas. Christmas Thanksgiving envelopes are in the pews. Kindly take one. Please note the timings of the services that will follow uh, from Sunday onwards on the 27th services at 8 a.m. Reverend Sadvashila Pandre will celebrate and preach. On the 31st of December, there will be an evening service at 7 p.m. Kindly note, the watch night service is going to be at 7 p.m. on 31st December. On January 1st, New Year's Day, we will just have one service at 8 a.m. John Marcus Presley and Jotham Samuel Bradley, sons of Anita Smiley and Joseph Wesley, were both placed first in the quiz organized by the Diocese Sunday School Committee. We congratulate uh, both of them. Bengal Christian Unity Rally is being organized by the Bengal Christian Council on the 20th of January 2021. The rally will start from the Church of the Epiphany, Tavapu, and end at Old Mission, Oxford Mission, Bihana. Let us also uh, remember those who are sick and the bereaved, and uh, it's our request that you please keep the sick of our parish in prayer, especially remembering Father James Holmes, who is also sick. Kindly uphold him and his family in your prayer. Birthdays and wedding anniversaries during this week. <coughs> Today is the birthday of Nicholas Bird, Samuel Bose, Diplonoel Sarkar, Sweetie Peterson. Tomorrow is the birthday of Kirsten Samuels. 27th, Daisy Day, Terence Sandler, Amitabh Bhattacharya, Arya Paul. Wedding anniversaries. Uh, I think this week is all over, but yeah, so I wish all those who have celebrated their birthdays or going to celebrate their birthdays and also their wedding anniversaries. All God's blessing. Kindly see the table at the back of the church. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you for us. Joy to the world, Lord. 
the curse is found, far as the curse is found.